Hey everybody, welcome to my first World of Warships replay on the 0.3.1 uh, version. Playing a match in my Gurumiyashi. Once again, a fantastic ship. So, cliff notes on what was added this patch. AP mechanics and armor were changed slightly, um, so battleships now tank much more effectively, uh, and cruiser guns are less likely to fuck them up with AP, but will do a number on them with HE. As you can see, some of the ships have received graphical updates. The Grimyashi now actually has its name written on it. It's the only ship in the game that currently has it. I was thinking they might do similar for Warspite and Yubari, but they haven't done it yet. They also touched up the little red star on the bow of the ship. Anti-aircraft guns and secondary armament disabled. Oh yes, and uh, there's that too. They've changed a lot of the sounds. Guns sound much better now. Um, a lot of the user interface stuff has been altered to make these sounds either less obnoxious or a little more um, telling of what is actually going on. For example, the disabling of secondaries in AA. US battleships have been added, and Japanese carriers have been added as well. Now, the Japanese carriers in World of Warships carry more aircraft than their American counterparts, which makes them very annoying. <laughs> to fight against a battleship, um, they can shit out torpedo bombers at a prodigious rate. However, the actual loadouts for aircraft for the carriers has been changed as well, and so dive bombers are actually a lot more effective than they used to be. In fact, they're very effective, um, and torpedo bombers are a little worse off than they were originally. From memory, the US carriers actually um, get better fighters overall than the Japanese, but I don't know the specifics of it because I don't play carriers, so you might want to read up on the patch notes for that. Now, as far as battleships go, the US battleships tend to turn quite well. Um, at the lower tiers, they're quite slow, but they have excellent turning circles, um, pretty much on par with Warspite. So they're very difficult to hit with torpedoes unless they're not paying attention. Anti-aircraft guns and secondary armament disabled. The Kitakami got a smoke screen, finally. Uh, it's only a very short duration one, same as the Iwaki gets, but it's better than nothing. A couple other changes. Um, a lot of the maps received graphical changes, and you can now actually see the underwater portion, uh, sorry, underwater portion of your ship on a lot of the maps. Uh, if you're looking at it from the right angle, you know, the water has some clarity to it um, on some of the maps and the little details have been added to others. First thing I run into is this guy in an Omaha. Now, while the AP mechanics might have changed, the Omaha is still just as vulnerable to it as it once was. Well, as it used to be in the last version of the game. And so I'm able to knock a huge chunk of his hit points off without taking any effective return fire. There's a Wyoming incoming, that's a tier 4 US battleship. It has, from memory, uh, 12, I want to say 12, 12 inch, or 14, 12 inch guns, I'm struggling to remember here. Uh, it has a lot of guns, but they're not very big, put it that way. So the Omaha beats a hasty retreat and goes down to one of our battleships. It quickly dumps some torpedoes off in the Wyoming's direction, but this far away he's probably going to spot them and begin maneuvering away. It seems he is actually paying attention and our torpedo bombers over by him are causing him to turn into them. Um, generally if torpedo bombers are approaching you, it's a better idea to turn into them than turn away from them because if the carrier driver is actually competent and drops the torps at very close range um, you've got a much better chance of them not fusing against the hull of your ship. Either way the Wyoming gets lit on fire by something and runs away. I'm currently unlit so although I could open fire on him I'm not going to. 
the Wyoming has four turrets on the rear of the ship, so it's quite good at shooting at things as it runs away. There's a lot of enemy ships coming this way. We can see South Carolina there, the tier 3 US battleship, the first battleship in their tech tree. It is horrifically slow, not very well armored, and its guns aren't very big. Um, but it does have at least super firing turrets, which makes it much better at chasing something down and firing at it as it goes, and then at the Kowatch. Now one of the other points about the US battleships is that until you get into the higher tiers, they have very short range. The reason for this is because unlike the Japanese battleships, they tend not to have giant Jenga towers sitting on top of them. The gun range is dictated by the height and width of the rangefinder on the main gun director. The later US battleships do have quite highly placed directors, so they don't do too badly out of it, but the Japanese with their pagoda masts tend to have very highly placed directors from the Congo up. Obviously the low tier battleships have a simple um, rangefinder mounted quite low down, and so they lack range. I launch off another spread of torps at the enemy wiring coming through the middle. I wasn't really expecting anything out of them, I thought he would dodge them, as I beat a hasty retreat, but he actually drove straight into three of them, and you could see there for a moment just how many turrets that thing has. Now it's worth noting as well that the handling mechanics of the ships have been changed. Turn rate is now based more on the length, width, and speed of your ship, so slowing down and trying to make a sharp turn is much more effective, as you saw there where I nearly ran myself aground. What this also means is that short, fat ships, like the early battleships, turn very well, while cruisers need a lot of room. And you can see the ricochet effects here, as my AP shells bounce off the Ubari at longer range. Now this is part of the AP rework. Instead of always doing damage, even when they don't actually penetrate, AP shells will bounce much more often now. This means that battleships will take significantly less damage, unless you're actually putting shots into something important. Um, if your shots are just penning through the corner of the deck or into an empty compartment, it doesn't do anything much to them. Our victory is in sight. What this means is that you need much more careful shot placement if you want to have any real effect, or you need to go to HE and try and knock out deck modules or light things on fire. And for many of the cruisers, particularly the high rate of fire cruisers like the Cleveland and the Atlanta, this makes them very, very good at burning things to death. Our team has taken the lead. Against other cruisers and against destroyers, AP is still viable if you know where to fire it. Um, the Grimyashi actually stands out among the low tier destroyers in that its AP is viable against cruisers at most ranges because it's got guns on par with a lot of the tier 3 and 4 cruisers, but most of the destroyers you're going to be wanting to use HE now, because your AP will no longer chip away at a battleship um, at most ranges. Let's see if I can get some shots into this Ubari here. I am getting a few hits in and doing a little bit of damage, but I'm not getting any real good Citadel shots here. Instead of continuing to fire at him, I decide to temporarily shift my attention to these battleships. I blast off a full spread of torpedoes. One spread at one of the ships and one at the other. And I'm getting quite badly beat as I try and run away from these guys. So I turn away and get ready to jam my smoke key. Our team is way up on points. Um, replays don't show the point score for some reason in Domination, but we were winning this one, so I just decide to run away and try for what more damage I can get. The enemy battleships stupidly drive into my torps, and our team is just about to win.